So we'll start. We'll start as usual before we start the new halachas to do a review. And the reason for that is, as mentioned before, that when there's a information overload, so to speak, when you're learning a bunch of new information, it's hard to process. When the day passes and you revisit the information that you learned yesterday, it's much easier to process. And it sticks also. So we're holding in chapter 50, Tarek Nun, the 10th halacha. We're just going to say that out loud. We have one more halacha left to this Tarek, to this chapter. Uh, the page I don't know, but it's because uh, it's a different. I have a different print. Yeah, it's Nun. And then, and it's a shem. We're going to move on to the next chapter. The next Perik, which is an Aleph, the after bracha, after one eight. So now we're covering the brachas you make before you eat. And the next Perik, the next chapter is dealing with the brachas that you make after you eat. Okay, so just to review what we learned yesterday, if somebody put something, a food in the mouth and they realized, oh boy, I did not make a bracha, what do you do? Uh, uh, if you could, if it's not going to be gross, let's say a hard candy, that's a very good example. It's not going to be gross, so the thing, the proper thing to do is to take it out of your mouth, recite the bracha, and then eat it afterwards. If the food is not going to be so pleasant afterwards, or it's, yeah, exactly, you push it to the side, you, prefer, you recite a bracha, and then you swallow. Does anyone remember why? Why can't you just put it to the side to begin with? Exactly, because the Pasuk says, that when you make a bracha, a Jew's mouth should be filled with Hashem's praise and nothing else. So that's why when you're able to, this is the proper thing to do. Your mouth should not have anything else in it. You say a bracha and then you eat. If it's impossible, we're also not allowed to throw, throw out food. There's a iser baltashka, so there's a prohibition of wasting things, destroying them for no reason. So in such a case, so you, move, you move it to the side, that takes precedence, you recite the bracha, and then you swallow. Now, what happens if you don't have, you're not eating a solid, you're eating a liquid, or you're having cereal, where you cannot spit it out and put it back in, and you cannot move it to the side. It's gonna, and you could move it to the side, but you can't recite a bracha. What do you do then? If you have more of it, spit it out, like just completely. Exactly. If you have more of it, so you should actually not eat it. You should spit it out, recite a bracha, and eat from the rest. If you do not have more of it, then the is you make it, you swallow, and then you recite a bracha afterwards. Okay. For those who eat or drink this kind of stuff. Oh, so oh, so the kavana. There's a few differences. If you made the shahakol on the meat, so you actually do not have to have in mind the drink, because being that the meat is more chashuv, it's more have, it has it's a food with more importance, with more chashivas to it. So anything is automatically included, as long as it's in front of you. If you made a bracha on the drink first, which is less uh, prestige, so to say, has less chashivus than the meat, then you actually have to have the meat explicitly in mind. If you did not have it in mind, then actually one does recite a bracha on the meat. Okay. Now, what have, that's with the example that we just gave is two things, two types of food that have the same bracha. What happens now if you have something which is her eights, you have an apple on the table and you have uh, some candies. What do you do? Candies, shahako candies. Oh, maybe. 
Yeah, which one do you make first? Uh, it's very good. Yes. Yeah. Very, very good. Um, so it's mentioned in this, if in this uh, halacha separately, if you made a hadama on something which is a eight, do you have to make another bracha ha eight? No. You made hadama on something which is really ha eight. You have to make a new bracha? No. Why is that? Because a tree also grows from the ground. So the first is ha eight, ha eight, and then your hadama, and then shakal. Yeah, exactly. The first halacha was that if somebody by in this uh, chapter in the paddock is if somebody makes a bracha shahakal on anything and he ate, so the diavid it actually counts. But it's, the proper thing is not to do that, of course. The proper thing is to make the proper bracha on each food. Actually, now that we mentioned it, does anybody remember the two exceptions to this rule? Uh, bananas. Um... Oh, why? Why bananas? Because it's not the. It only goes twice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and because of that, yeah. because of this, there's a dis there's a dispute yeah. amongst the halachic authorities if the tree that it goes from is this considered a tree or is it considered from the ground? So very very good. And another example. So. Let's preface a little bit. So we were saying that the bracha, if you make a shahakal on something, you're not supposed to, but if one did, and there was not the proper bracha, and they ate already, then you do not make a new bracha. And the two exceptions to this rule, the example of this exception was just brought was bananas, and the same is true to rice. But the reason for these exceptions is because there is a dispute amongst the halachic authorities of which bracha you're supposed to make. So therefore, the proper thing to do is to eat a batecha sa'udo within a meal, or if you covered all the brachas and you're eating it together with everything else. But if one made a shahakal, that is acceptable. And the second exception to the rule of where you are allowed to make a shahakal, even if the bracha may be a little bit different, is where, anyone remember? Is when you don't know what you're eating. You know, it's kosher, but you have no idea what kind of food this is. You don't know if it's... You make a shakal? Yeah, exactly. If you have no idea what uh, what it is, then you make a shakal, exactly. So somebody started drinking in this room, then they went to the next room with the cup in their hands, the same cup of water. Do they make a nubrach in the next room? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, very good. Exactly. If they do not have a mind, then one does have to make a new bracha. But if one does have a mind that, you know, I'm taking this cup, I know that in two minutes I have to be in that room, so I'm having in mind that I'm drinking here and I'm continuing to drink there, that is acceptable. Now, as mentioned yesterday, there are those that write that today, the norm, the norm by people is you walk around, you know, you take a, a cup or a snack and you walk around in many different places. So they say, being that this is the norm, it's as if you had it in mind because you have in mind, what's the normal thing to do? The normal thing is to walk around today. You know, people back then, I guess they were more settled. You sit down to eat, you're eating. You do this, you do, that's what you're doing. Today, you know, we're balancing a million things at the same time. So the normal thing is you walk around. So the best thing is not to just rely on that. The best thing is to actually have in mind that as you're making the bracha, before you make the bracha, that you're continuing to drink or eat wherever you're going. Okay. Now let's say you're eating with a few friends. There's three people eating together, and two of them went out of the room. Nobody had in mind that they're going to, to be going out. Let's say, you know, there's a, somebody came to town, they, they knocked on the door, they went outside to greet them. The friend is, two, so two of them went out, one friend stayed, and they came back. 
they did not have in mind that they're going to be going down and out of the house. Now they return to the spot to continue to eat. Do they recite a new bracha or not? Yes. Yeah, if they're the, 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 not one person. Oh, so, everyone there they're fine, no? Oh, so that's weird. In in general, if they're by themselves, the halacha would be you do make a new bracha. Over here is a little bit different. Over here, being that there's a kriyas together, so if two people left, that third person actually saves them because the kriyas is still there. Yeah, they don't make a bracha. We, we said yesterday, remember that every single detail that we do is not Yeah, this is, this is very important. He saves them from the bracha. Saves them, not saves them if something's going to happen. Saves them meaning from making a new bracha. Meaning, in general, you don't want to make more brachas than, than you have to, right? Because the, the bracha shenet tzricha, all of these things. So he actually, she actually holds on to the kvius, to the, they sat down, now they're eating, right? Mm -hmm. The problem of leaving is because you're doing something new, it's called a hafzik. You are removing yourself from what you were doing. If one person stay, that keeps the same kvius that they had originally. Fixing that kvius? Yeah, yeah, same idea. Does it have to be time-bound or not? Oh, time-bound, that's a very, very good question. We're going to, uh, so the answer is yes or no. <laughs> yes, because it, anyways, if somebody waited a certain amount, we're going to see that in the next chapter, in the, from the last halakha to the next chapter, anyways, they have to make a rebracha. And no, because without this detail, that's, it's not time bound. Okay, well, that's a very, very good question. I'm going to learn this halakha soon. Wow, that's so cool. Okay, now you're at a big simcha, you're at a you know, big hall, there's a big presentation, or there's a big presentation, and you took, you know, the serving drinks or refreshments. It's a huge room, much farther than the distance between this room to that room, but it's one room. You started off in one corner with a made bracha, you ate or you drank, and you, you landed towards the middle of the presentation or the simcha in the other corner of the room. It's a very big room, but it's one room. What do you do? You have to make a new bracha or you just continue? Correct. And as mentioned yesterday, this is actually a very common thing with today's uh, home designing, if open concept, you know, if you have a huge first floor, but really in essence, it's all one room. There's no walls, there's nothing. It's just, you call this the kitchen, you call that uh, the living room, that the dining room, but it's all open, it's all one room, then uh, you do not make a bracha either. Now, the last halacha of this chapter, and then with Hashem, we're going to be moving on to the next chapter. So, Tazayin, the 16th halacha. In Eichel Peiris began, Shehumukaf Mechitze, somebody came to a garden. This is a very common thing to do. People go fruit picking, right? You, you can go apples, uh, there's many things you can do, right? So whether it's legal or illegal, I'm not going into it, but if somebody's going to, or let's say you're going to your own garden and you want to eat apples. So the shilas of uh, if the trees, they have to wait a few years before you can eat it. Uh, no, let's not go into that now. So if it's a garden, yeah, it's actually surrounded with, it's fenced in. And you actually had a mind. So you're in a fenced in garden. You made a bracha. What bracha did you make an apple? Yeah, and you had a mind that you're actually going to be eating from other trees also. So the halacha is, this is a very, very important halacha. Let's say you have a big um, garden. You made a bracha ha'etz, right? So even if you got to, and you had in mind that you're going to be continuing to eat from other trees, and you got to a point in the garden where you no longer see your original spot, 
you can't see where you started off with your first uh, fruit. Nevertheless, if you didn't, if you weren't mapsic, you didn't, uh, you didn't go out, you, you didn't do anything else, the halacha is you actually do not recite a new bracha. So it's very important to point out, why is that? Because it's mukhaf mechitzes, it's, um, it's fenced in. Being that it's fenced in, it's the same idea, it's the same concept as being in one room. It's very important to remember. Aval im ein hagan mukhaf mechitzes, but if somebody is in a garden which is not fenced in, it's completely open, so in essence you're outside, right? If the halacha actually is that you do have to recite a new bracha. And for sure, if somebody is going to a new garden, a second garden, then it doesn't, have, it doesn't help that one had a mind to continue eating. Okay, so that's the general halachis of oh, I just want to point out there's one more detail to this. It doesn't have it in the regular print. The exception to the rule, if there's no um, if there's no if it's not fenced in, is if you can still see your original place, you do not make an abracha. So let's just recap. If you're fenced in, sorry, even if it's not fenced, correct, yes. So if it's fenced in, you're not required to recite in bracha. If it's not fenced in, as long as you can see your original spot where you made the first bracha, you do not make a new bracha. If you can no longer see where you were, and for sure, if you went to a new garden and you can't see, then you do make a new bracha. So that's that. Now we're going to be learning the next chapter in Nun Aleph 51. We're going to be covering the halachis of the after bracha. So just as we mentioned, when it comes to the bracha, the shayna, the bracha, before you eat, sometimes, you know, you can have different types of food in front of you. Either you know what it is, you don't know what it is. So just like when you make a bracha before you eat, sometimes, You'll, you'll eat something, you'll include the food that you want to eat with the brachas that you're making on other foods. There's a lot of uh, tricks if you don't know what you're eating. It's the same concept when it comes to bracha achreya, to the after bracha. We're going to see specifically the halachas and what happens if you eat more than one type of food. And uh, there's, in general, three types of a bracha achreya. If somebody eats bread, what do they what bracha do they make after? The bench. Right? right, that's the longest one. It's thanking Hashem for all of the good things that we have. And it's Yisrael. Then there's a bracha aches made shalish. It's one bracha. Let's say you had mezainas. So there's a, or you had fruits that Eretz Yisrael that Israel is praised for. That deserves its own bracha because of its uh, prestige, so to speak. And then you have a beira in the fashe. So somebody had something which is shahako, water, meat, or cheese, of course, not together, candy, all of these things. Then you make a beira in the fashe, rabbis. And we're actually going to see in this chapter, we're going to translate one of these brachas. And also, as I mentioned yesterday, when we make a bracha, it's important not just to rattle it off to get it over with. But if we really realize, you know, what we're thanking Hashem for, Beit HaNefash Yisrabis, Hashem had a lot of people, and everyone is missing what they're missing, and Hashem did it on purpose, and Hashem takes care of every single person to make sure they have what they need, you know, if we truly internalize what these brachas mean, they're very powerful. And uh, another example of this is my Tachnon. Right, everyone's always happy when you can skip tachnum. You know, today is a, a yom tiv, today is this, today is that. So you're not supposed to say tachnum, you don't say tachnum. But the truth is, especially on a Monday and a Thursday, we have a few extra pages there, right? The special tachnum. You know, if we, if, if, if we understand what we're saying, we're davening to Hashem that we are your nation, we are this, we are it's mamish powerful things. 
So as mentioned in the previous classes, you know, it's very Kedai, everyone should have their own English Siddur, set some time aside every single day, five, 10 minutes, just to read and translate so we know what we're saying. They're very, very, very powerful tefillos. If, you know, if you understand the Pirish Amilis so of what we're saying, it's, first of all, you're not gonna to wanna to rattle it off because you see what you're saying is meaningful. And if you realize that Hashem is actually listening to your tefillos, Hashem is listening to what you're praying, you know, it, it changes your whole experience. So I wanted to, I, I started off with this because the truth is when we realize, when we thank Hashem for the food that we had, it's very easy to rattle off the bracha, especially if you know it by heart. It's not so hard. You know, if you say it for, for a few months, a few years, you'll know it by heart. But that's not the proper way. The proper way is to thank Baruch, Ata, Hashem, the blessing Hashem, so it's very, very important, you know, to take the time to learn what these brachas mean, internalize it, and to spend the extra 30 seconds to think about what you're saying. It'll be a whole different experience. You'll see that it's more meaningful. You're going to want to do it. Okay. So, chapter 51, Perekman Aleph, Klolim, Bivrach, Achreina, Ubaikas, Vav, Seifim. Aleph, so the first halacha. Yeah, so peres ha ilon, chutz meshivas ha minim, the al kol peres ha adama, the yerakes, the kol davar she ain gidule min ha aritz. Page, I'm not sure, but it's chapter 51. I have a different print, so I don't know. But the next chapter, yeah. Yeah, well called Paris or Adama, the Iraq is the whole Davish Ain Gidulim in her Arit, Nevarech, La Reyam, Bere Nefash is Bukhono, the Philo Ach of the Shasa, Nifty Bivraka Achas. So Paris or Elon, fruits which grow from the tree, except for the Shiva Samina, we're going to discuss that those halachas soon. Alpeiris ha'adama, fruits or vegetables that grow from the ground. Alpeiris ha'adama, the Iraq is v'chol davish she'en gedulim in ha'aretz, or anything that does not grow from the ground. Um, milk, cheese products, these things do not grow from the ground. Meat, candies, drinks, all of these things. You don't make the birchat hamazon, you don't make birchas hamazon, you don't make halamichia, you make a bayre nefashis. And even if somebody ate, let's say they had some cheese, the shasa, and they drank, they do not recite two brachas after they finish eating. You only recite one bracha. After drink two? After drink two, yes. Only drinking. Drinking and eating. If you only drink them. If you only drink it, also you make a bracha. Yeah. After I drink water, I need to say for uh, a... Yeah, sure. No. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, very good question. Yeah. So it says over here. Yeah. Sure. I feel the the shasa, and the drink. You only make you do make a bracha chreina. So bracha This is very this is a very good point as we mentioned previously. On water, if you're not thirsty, you don't make a bracha. You don't make a bracha. Uh, but if somebody they are th you know they they drink, you do make a bracha. <laughs> If you were not thirsty, yes. But we mentioned earlier that there's people that are they're, they're careful. Even if they're not thirsty, they'll eat or drink something else and have that water in mind, not to drink without a bracha. Well, like, go to time again, then like five. Sure. Now, if you look at the shasa, you If you ate, and you drank, so you did two things, right? You had water and you had uh, a candy. 
You make one bracha afterwards. That's it. It includes both, and the Bered and the includes both of those things. Now, as mentioned earlier, when it comes to a bracha rishayna, a bracha before you eat, any small amount, you make a bracha on. Is the same true for if you're having, let's say, bread, but you're having a little bit. If you're only having a little bit, you're not having a, a kebeya, which is two kazesim. Do you make a bracha on until it's a nine? Anyone remember? Mm-hmm. For the first halachot that we learned. Until, oh, we don't. So there's three things to remember here. For washing for bread, you only make a bracha if you're going to be having a two kazesim which practically speaking, if you take a small matchbox or a little chayim cup and you stuff it with bread, you fill it up, that's one kazayas. Two of those is a kebeya. So if you're having such an amount, a regular sandwich, whatever it is, you make a bracha al sedan. If you're just tasting a little bit, you're having very little, you do not make a bracha al sedan. But anything you put into your mouth, you do make a bracha. You have to thank Hashem, because even though you may not be having a lot, but the very fact that you're tasting it, a person is deriving pleasure. And for Birchas and Nahanin, something that a person derives pleasure from, they do have to thank Hashem for it. Bracha Achreina is a little bit different. Bracha Achreina, you have to have at least a Kazayas. So let's read inside. Beis, Bracha Achreina, Mechain, Birchas Hamazin. Even if it's just the only thing you eat. Even if it's the only thing you eat. Yes. And we'll see a second that there is, in a second, that there is a discussion about a whole fruit, let's say. Something that's so do we look at it because it's whole, it's complete, that adds chashivas to it, it adds um, prestige is the wrong word, um, importance because it's whole. So even if it's less than a kazayis, do you still make a bracha chreina or not? So we'll, we'll see that in a second. So even if it's the only thing you ate, if it's less than the share, you do not make a bracha. And the share is a kazayis. The kazayis for all practical purposes is you take a matchbox, or you take a l'chaim cup, and if you fill it up, you're able to fill it up with the food that you're eating, you stuff it, meaning there's no air left, that is the amount, which is not a lot. It's really not a lot. So if you're eating, you know, a few candies here and there, if you're eating uh, a piece of meat, a piece of chicken, chances are most of the times you will have a kazais, but if you're having very little, you have to remember that you don't make a bracha chreina. Okay, so now when it comes to drinks, here he brings two opinions, but the accepted opinion is you only make a bracha chreina after you drink a revius. Did you say we yes. Okay. Yes. So just like when making kiddush, you know, you can't take the little cups because it's much smaller. You take a bigger cup. Very big. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if you're having a glass of water like this, you're for sure covered. And the view is, and what, which, what do they put in the back of the, the English ones? It's 2.8 ounces. That's why we drink everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, depends, not always. So what are they right here? Because it's 2.8, 2. but if, you, if you're using this one, what do they have here? They write 2.9 for, for the Meisha Shita. Huh? Chazanish is 5.1, wow. 
So the Chaim no, which is not brought over here, it's not brought in this uh, chart. That's why I, I wanted to see what they have over here. Sorry. Yes, Blinado will have to print it out. So over here, it brings two opinions, the Meshav Feinstein's opinion, which was from the big Paiskin in the generation, and the Chazin Ish, which was another big Paiskin in, in Ernest Israel. So these Shiurim are a little bit bigger than what we follow. So Blinado will have to bring a, a chart. They do have the Khanno's uh, share. So again, if you're having a Rebiyas, you do make a Bracha Chreina, which is around 2.8 ounces. So for food, it's a Kezayas. It's really not so much. Most of the times when you're eating or drinking, you do have this amount anyways. So the third Halacha, as we mentioned just a few minutes ago, Dava Shehu Kibriyase, the Haino Agais Echad, a Shire Pri, Vafilu Kidneys Echad, Somebody, something which is whole and complete on its own, meaning this is the way Hashem created it. For example, what's brought over here, somebody's eating a walnut. They didn't crack it. It's whole, just the way Hashem created it. So there is an opinion that holds. Yesh emrim afo pi she'en bay kazayis mikol mokim kivin shehu pri shalim and mevarchin acharav brach achreina v'yesh chelkin. There's two ways to look at it. The one way to look at it is being that this is a complete fruit, it's whole. That itself gives it an importance, enough so that you can make a bracha chreina after it. Or the other opinion will say no, being that you didn't eat an amount which satisfies a person, which is a kazayas, you do not recite a bracha afterwards. Now, the halacha lemaisa, what you do in actuality, the Kishro Chanarev continues, v'lachein latzis midi safik ein lachal pachis mekazayis. You should not eat less than mekazayis. So even though it's whole, it's a complete fruit, you should have a kazayis of it in order to make a bracha, which is according to all opinions. Because when it comes to, to making brachas, we always try to cover all opinions. Because if not, there's a, a prohibition of making a bracha, which is you're not supposed to be making, a bracha levatala, a bracha she'elitzricha, which these are serious things. So we always try to cover all grounds when we're making a bracha, so there shouldn't be any suffix. The even is chala kadavra kedem achila, if the, what you're eating, it's split before you ate it, this... Uh, this fruit, let's say the, the walnut, that's the example given over here. Batal mi meno chashiluse ulakulo alma ein mevarchen alav bracha achreina befachis mikazais. So even according to those that hold that a fruit which is complete, it's kivriyasi, it's the way Hashem created it, if it was split, it's no longer whole, even those opinions will agree that you have to have a kazais to make a bracha achreina. So practically speaking, from this halacha, you should be taking out that in order to make a bracha chrena, you need a kazayas. That's it. Because we, in actuality, we do not rely on this opinion. It's a valid opinion. However, being that there's another opinion, we always try to cover ourselves from all grounds, not to have any room for doubt. Now, let's say you're having more than one thing. You're having some chips. You're having some um, something else, uh, candy, and not such a healthy diet, some vegetables, some fruits, let's, let's keep it healthy, right? But you didn't have from one of them by itself a kazayas. But altogether, you did have a kazayas. Oh, yeah. So do you, do you make a bracha of bayr and nefashis? Is that enough? The fact that because of everything together, of what I ate, there was a kazayas altogether. So can I make a, one bracha achreina because I ate a bunch of things together that were kazayas? So again, say. No, not bad. Now just fruits and vegetables. But from one fruit or vegetable, I did not have a kazayas. 
but together with a strawberry and an and apple, I did have a kazanis. Yeah, that's correct. They're mitztarif. That means they combine together the amount that I ate from one food with the amount that I ate from the other food. It combines together for a bracha achreina. So let's see inside. Kol ha'eichlin mitztarifin lekazayas. All foods, when you eat it, they combine together for the amount of a kazayas. Okay, we are actually going to skip these few lines because this is not, this is in, in, in practice, this is not what we do. So I'm going to skip this. That, that's the bracha that we, we make if we after water, after meat, after cheese. Oh, inshallah. Actually, I wanted to, for the next class, we're going to look inside the siddur, because actually it says in the halacha that it's important to learn, when you learn the brachot, it's important to learn them inside the siddur. So today we won't have a chance to do it, but as is Hashem, the plan is to actually look inside and to, to make note. Does everybody own their own sitter here or no? Yeah. So could we could dive so for next week to bring the sitter and we'll actually learn inside. And if you wanna make notes, you can actually make notes in your sitter or on the sticky note or whatever, however you wanna do it. And we'll actually learn the brachot inside. But the, the most important thing that I wanted to bring out from this halacha is ushtia imachila ein mitztarfin. This is something this is, which is very important. So this seif, this um, halacha is divided into three halachot, really, into three details. The first detail we just said outside. The second one we're skipping because in, in practice it's not what we do. And the third one we're going to say in a second. So again, to recap, food, even though one is one food, the other one is another food. But if you make a bracha of beit and nefashes after these foods, a celery with a tomato, you had a half a kazayas of the celery, half a kazayas of the tomato. The very fact that it's food, it's mitztanif. It combines together and you do recite a bracha achreina. That is only when it comes to foods. However, drinks and foods actually do not combine. That's what, this is the, the most important thing that I wanted to bring out from the Salacha, from the Salacha, is that, you know, sometimes somebody just has a little bit left in, the, in their snack, you know, but there's not enough, they know it's not enough to make a bracha, then they have enough, they have a little bit of drink in their cup left. So they, they drink to, from, the, from the drink that they have, but it's also not a revius. So you ate something which is less than the kazayas, so you cannot make a bracha of bain and fashes on the food because it's less than the shear. And you drank a little bit from the water or from the soda, whatever it is, the milk that you had, it was also less than the revias. It's important to note that they are not mitzitarat, they're not mitzitarat, they do not combine to help you make a bracha achreina. Only food and food, apple with a, a tomato, candy with a piece of meat they don't go together and just throw the examples so you would just say first bracha or you don't say bracha if oh. it's less than if it's less than a share you don't make a bracha yeah you, no 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 you make a bracha before, before that's for after. sure not after if it's less than the amount you don't make after correct correct so let's just recap this because it's it's something important it's a very common thing somebody has a little bit, uh, you know, a few chips left in the bag and they have, which is less than the kazais, of course, and they have less than a revius of water in the cup. So you don't have enough from the chips because it's less than the kazais to make a bracha achreina, and you don't have enough from the drink to make a bracha achreina because it's a revius. They do not combine to make a bracha achreina. If you have chips, you had uh, half a kazayas, 
And apple, you have it half a gazai, being that chips and apple, it's a food and a food, it's not a food and a drink. They actually do combine and you do recite a bracha achrena. Okay, so that's a very important thing to remember because it's very, very common. Now, this is go going back to your question that you asked earlier, is there a time frame? You know, I make a bracha, I took a sip, and, uh, you know, when I, I actually, I, I ate the amount, I had a kazayas or I drank a revias, does my opportunity to make a bracha ever expire? An after bracha, yes. Would it be different? Because I know for a meal, it's 72 minutes, and then if you eat, it can be extended 20 minutes. Oh. Is that the same if it's just... It's the same principle. Okay. It's the same principle. There is an expiration to how long you can make a bracha achreina. Now let's see inside exactly what that expiration is. I guess my question was more in, uh, in relation to the two guys going out and coming back. Oh, so it's the same, oh, but yes. But it would be the same principle if they go out for a certain amount of time. The reason why one cannot make a bracha, bracha they would have to make a new bracha is because they would have to make already a new after bracha. And since they already have to make a new after bracha from what they ate, they would have to make a new bracha anyways. That's why I said yes or no. It's a little bit confusing. <laughs> so actually, so over here, actually is over here is a different halacha. Over here is how long, sorry, do I have to make to eat a kazais? So I, I started saying that how long do you have to make a bracha achrena, an after bracha? That's uh, in the later halacha. My apologies. Over here, we're going to be learning how long do I have to eat a kazayas, right? In order to make a bracha chreina, you have to have a minimum amount. The question is, how much time do I have to eat that minimal amount? So, hey, the fifth halacha, achal techat zayas, somebody who had half a kazayas, the shaha, they waited, the chazar v'achal techat zayas, they went back, and they ate another half of a zayis, a kazayis. Im mitchila so achila harishena at seif la achila le hayazman yeser ki im kedai achilas pras mit star finish day achilas um mevarech bracha chreina. Avil im shaha yeser ein mit star fin. U bestia achila shaha parches mese ein mit star fin. Okay. Um, there's something called, okay, let's just finish this aloha, it's already 10 o'clock. There's something called Achilles Pras. There's a certain amount. In practice, there's a difference of opinion. It can be four minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes. There's different opinions. So the proper thing to do as soon as you eat, you make a bracha and you eat something, is to eat right away the proper amount. And then um, to avoid this. Okay, so we'll recap this aloha and it's a shem next week. And uh, for next week, I guess, to bring a siddur. Everyone, if they have a siddur, and uh, we'll learn inside the Mitzvah Shem. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's the Mitzvah Shem, yeah.